Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to do kind of a different video today. Usually, you know, I analyze songs that I've produced, talk about music production, more of the technical aspects of it. Today, I wanted to talk about how I got my publishing deal. So for those of you that don't know, music publishing deals are contracts for songwriters when a publishing company like Sony, Universal, BMG, um, there's many, many different companies. Some of them, you might recognize their names. So what these companies do is that they sign songwriters so that they can own a piece of the songs that the songwriter write and receive something called publishing royalty. I'm definitely not the expert on this, even though I've been a published songwriter for like five years. Um, I would recommend if you guys want to know more like technical type information about how publishing and collection and royalties work, go on the internet. There's plenty of information about that stuff. What I wanted to talk about is more of a, the story of how I got my deal, because I know that there's sort of a closed off feeling about this. Usually if you Google how to get a publishing deal, you get some very general advice. Now, this is not an advice video per se, because I do think that every situation is unique and different. And it's really hard to give advice on this because it really depends on who the people are that are giving you the deal, what your situation is. Are you an artist? Are you a producer? Are you a songwriter? What are you trying to do? What have you done? Do you have songs that have already been released by artists? Um, are you an artist that's releasing music? There's just like a million factors. So that's why it's like, tough to be like, this is how you get a publishing deal. There's no answer really. So I wanted to just talk about how I got my deal and how that worked. And hopefully you guys might find inspiration in that. Or if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer those. Yeah, let's just dive in. So my deal is with a company that's called BMG. You can look them up. They're a very big company, you know, like Sony, Universal, like that kind of scale of company, they, they're very big. So I've been with them since 2014 and I started really trying to get a publishing deal in probably like 2013, I would say. And my publishing deal was actually signed in Nashville, which is interesting because I've been in LA for the majority of the duration of my deal. So it worked out in a funky way where they signed me as somebody that they thought would be in Nashville, would be working primarily in country music, and it didn't work out that way. I moved to Nashville in 2012, I wanna say. Yeah, it was 2012. I, it's safe to say I didn't really have anything going on. I have been doing music for, oh, uh, like, like seven years at this point, like pretty much full time and just kind of having no go of it at all. I think there's were a lot of factors involved in that. The primary factor was that during those whole seven years, I was sort of under a rock. For those of you that don't know, I did come here from another country. So when I did move to the States, I didn't know literally anybody except my husband, Brad. So it was a very long, slow process for me to, you know, meet anybody at all, especially anybody in the music industry. I moved to Nashville, kind of attracted to country music, I think because I really like the storytelling aspect of it. For those of you that don't know, I'm also an aspiring author. Uh, I'm writing my first book right now. And I'm really, really attracted to storytelling. It's just something that I've always done. And I think country music really appealed to me in that way because you could really tell a story with that lyric. It didn't have to be as metaphoric. It could just be straight up like, this is what happened. This is the story. I did move to Nashville. And the first thing that I did there is I really just started putting myself out there. It was, it was an interesting moment for me because I think I had been in LA before that. I'm in LA now again and super happy here. But at that time, I just really didn't have that good of a go in LA. I never managed to really get to know anybody, do anything, was super underexposed as a creative, never had sessions with other songwriters or producers, just sort of sat at home and like hoped something would happen and nothing did. So, and I think at that point when I got to Nashville, I kind of realized, hey, this is a fresh start. I should start like doing something. <laughs> so I, immediately in the first week that I moved, I went to every single club 
um, and bar in Nashville. And I just said, hey, I'm a singer. Can I perform here? And you know, some of the smaller bars, like the real like, dives, they were like, okay, sure. We literally don't care who sings here. And others, you know, they, there was more of a process, like they needed to see a CD, this, you know, this is 2012. Um, they needed to like see social media or like whatever it was, I don't even remember. But um, I did get a lot of tiny kind of gigs and I started playing them immediately, just showing up with a guitar and singing, you know, performing in rounds, which for those of you guys that are not familiar with Nashville, what a round is several songwriters sit on stage and take turns performing songs. And it usually involves some sort of storytelling aspect too in the middle. So that was cool for me. And at the same time that I started performing, I also started hitting people up. So I did know a few people in Nashville just from, you know, having sort of been in the industry out in LA. I did meet some people here and there. So I hit up the people that I did know. Um, it wasn't very many people. And I asked to write with them. You know, some of it worked out. Other people kind of blew me off because I didn't have anything going on. That's what happens, that's life. I also just reached out cold to a bunch of people. Now this is 2012, the age of Facebook. So I straight up got on Facebook and I just started adding people, you know, inviting people to listen to my music. Um, kind of asking if I could write with people, which again, I kind of don't, you know, I don't recommend just kind of hounding people like that. Like, I think I was kind of spammy. Like I sent people my links, you know, like we're like a kind of a pre-made message with a link, which is, like I said, like, I don't think that's always the best way to do it. I do think I did have something interesting. So I did get some response. And what I did have was that I was producing my music and writing my music. Cause I think in Nashville, especially at that time, it was very uncommon for an artist to produce their own music, especially for a young female. So I did get some songwriters and, you know, and even industry people that were like, oh, you, you seem like you have something interesting. Let's meet, let's write. So I did that for about a year, maybe even two years. Um, no, I'd say it was like a year and a half. And at that point, so I had already made some friends that were songwriters and producers and people like that. So, and I had created some music with those people. So fast forward a couple of years, maybe like a year, year and a half. And this is like 2013 now, like beginning of 2014. And I had been writing with some people that I've met when I moved to Nashville. You know, I had been performing in better venues now because that's what happens when you just kind of keep doing it and keep reaching out and keep, kind of getting your name out there. So, and I think at that point, I really started thinking, hey, like I really wanna to try to get a publishing deal. So the first thing that I did is, this is fu so funny to me now, cause I'm so the opposite of this now, but at that time I thought it would be very beneficial for me to know like every company in Nashville, every single person that works for them at that moment, who the A&Rs are, who the different reps are. So I scoured the internet and I looked for articles that featured advice from those publishing reps. I looked for some of these directories that they had of like Nashville professionals. And I made a Word document list of like everybody that I could hit up basically like, you know, hey, do you wanna sign me basically? So, and the way I did this too, is I kind of knew that yes, it's Nashville. Yes, everybody's country. Yes, everybody like, you know, is a songwriter and trying to do their thing. So I knew that people wouldn't necessarily be interested if I was just like, hi, I am a female country singer and a songwriter. Okay, bitch, like there's many of you. So I, at that time, created a few songs that were in this trap country kind of vein. Now, being in 2020, you guys are probably thinking like, oh, like Old Town Road. Not quite. So this was almost like bro country, like rapping country, which is really, really funny because if you think about artistry and personality, it almost seems bizarre that somebody like me would do music like that um, because I'm very, introverted and I don't have that kind of bravado that that takes and I don't I'm not that country either <laughs> but that's at, at that time because I did come from a background of pop and R&B and I didn't know how to rap like more or less not like you know Cardi B or something but I could carry a flow I didn't stumble over my own words I had like 
swag. <laughs> so I thought, hey, I should combine this with country. So I had a few songs in that genre and those were the songs that I sent to the publishers. And I titled the email, I kid you not, Country Kesha. I was blonde at that time. I had these like braids in my hair that were like pink and stuff. So I low-key did look like Kesha and I wore it like these really kind of fringe outfits with like leather cuffs and like, I, I mean, I'm just gonna insert a photo. Of, like, this is what I looked like. This is 2012, 2013, 2014. So like, don't judge me. <laughs> but so I titled the email Country Kesha and I send them songs like this, which, you know, I'm gonna play just like a little snippet of it. And this is basically me about rapping about being in Nashville. <laughs> You roll in a town with your new guitar and a couple of tunes about your broken heart. Small town bonafide gonna go far, gonna happen like that, gonna be a big star. Teeth whitened, boot shining, hip granite. Getting warmed up for your headline tour, popping them strings at the Commodore. Then you run into a writer under Mom Briam. I had a number 20 back in 91. Said, Buy me a beer, let's ride ahead. But the day of, uh, uh, he So you take a stroll over to BMI. The receptionist got the prettiest smile, but she says, I'm sorry, all the reps aren't here. Just like ASCAP? Man, that's weird. So you leave your CD on top of that stack. <laughs> you know they're gonna call you right back, right? Welcome to Music City. Better say a prayer to Conway Twitty Cause if you're gonna make it first you gotta take it Welcome to Music City uh, Alright, so you get the picture. So you think that just like is a bad idea, right? Sending country rapping songs to like big publishers and being like, hey, like we should meet. So funny enough, that worked. I got several publishers that thought it was interesting. They clicked on my clickbait email, Country Kesha, and they listened to music like this and they were like, wait, like, yeah, it's weird, but like, is that good? <laughs> so what ended up happening is I did take several meetings at that time with people that just were really intrigued by that email. And I did have some other songs that weren't, you know, so gimmicky as that, uh, and kind of was able to back it up, I guess, at that point with, Songs that were like, oh, this could be cut by a country artist, this could be cut by a country artist. Okay, interesting. So, and then what ended up happening at that point is I had, you know, several people that were kind of keeping an eye on me. And this is what happens in pop music publishing and country music publishing. I've seen this happen with like a lot of friends where people are aware of you, but you don't get an offer right away. I've actually never heard of that, of somebody just like walking in, unless you're like, you know, an established artist already, like a new person walking in that doesn't have a hit or anything. And them just being like rolling out the red carpet and going like, okay, here's your deal. It just doesn't work that way. So with newer people that haven't proven themselves yet with like a hit song or anything with any kind of traction, what they want is to see you either get a hit or just get some really good songs, kind of get some traction within the songwriting community, writing with people that are more established than you, stuff like that. So that's what I did for the next like six months after my first round of meetings. I wrote, they, what they did is they sent me to write with some of their songwriters, with some of songwriters that wrote for their friends, for their friends' publishing companies, just to kind of get me out into the community a little bit more and kind of get me, they just test me out, really. And I'm sure they were also asking for opinions from those songwriters, like, hey, she ain't good, like, she talented. So, and that's that's usually actually what happens, I would say, to expect that more than anything else, is that for six months to a year, they're gonna be like, okay, like, let's see how you do. And then after that, about, mm, I'm, I'm thinking like March, 2014, is when I actually got an offer uh, from BMG. It's a joint venture with another smaller boutique company in Nashville. So and they wanted to sign me and they wanted to sign me as a songwriter and an artist because they did believe in too much 
and believe in my country rap and stuff. <laughs> so, and they thought it was interesting, which is fun, which proves that, you know, a clickbait email titled Country Cash App can get you a deal. So and after that, you know, the legal stuff takes a few months to kind of get the contract done with some of those bigger contracts. And then I've been with this deal for five years now, which is great. You know, they've been with me through my transition because I did decide I didn't want to be in country music anymore. I didn't want to be um, a country artist specifically anymore. And I think a lot of companies would have been really thrown off by that, but it's been cool to see that they were supportive of me doing what I actually wanted to do, which was move to LA, start Liar with Ellie, and you know, just really pursue what made me happy. Cause I think I realized that the reason I really liked kind of like the country rap stuff wasn't necessarily because I like like that genre. It was just that I really enjoyed producing music with that level of energy, with the 808 and with the really thick kick and the thwacky snare. You know, I felt like it was the only facet of country where I could be that aggressive track-wise and get away with it because a lot of the other countries are a little bit more traditional instrumentally, a little bit chiller on the program sounds and has a lot more live music, which I do like as well. It's just, I think I was really drawn to the other thing more. So as I grew as a creative, I realized, oh, like what I really, really enjoy is just more of the programming. And I think I can be happier and find more of that in pop music and basically that I did and that's how it worked out. But yeah, anyway, this is my story of how I got a deal. Now, are you gonna get a deal now in 2020 sending cold emails? You know, I don't really know. I really, <laughs> and like going on Facebook and hounding people and stuff. I don't know, this is not an advice video. This is just kinda, hey, this is how it worked out for me. I think the thing just to really kinda Keep in mind is that a deal will come when you're ready, right? I think a deal will come when you have music that interests people, when you have something to say as a songwriter, when you're well developed as a producer, when your voice as an artist is well developed. And that point comes, you know that because you do get interest and you do get people to pay attention to you, even if you aren't you know the biggest artist yet or the most established songwriter and producer i just think people can really tell when you have something to say so i would definitely if i would recommend anything is just kind of keeping your eye on your art really because that is what's going to attract the people you know yes you can frame it in like a marketing way like country kesha you know click on my link you can do that and that honestly helps but like if you don't have the substance to back it up it usually won't work they'll look at it and they won't respond but yeah anyway that is my story of me getting my pub deal as always feel free to ask questions uh please hit the subscribe button please like this video and i will see you guys on the next one